Chicago Cubs baseball on ABC7. Warm and overcast here in downtown Minneapolis, and a sellout crowd will be on hand today as we bring you Cubs baseball on ABC7. It's the medal game of a three-game interleague set against the Minnesota Twins. Hi again, everyone. Alongside Jim Deshays, I'm Len Casper. All Twins last night, 7-2 in the uh, series opener. They got a lot of contributions throughout their lineup, but particularly from their third baseman, Trevor Plouffe. Yeah, the Twins uh, so much better in their home ballpark. And Trevor Plouffe was really good here last night. Good things happened for him early. Routine ground ball should have been two to Castro. He mishandled it. Late leads to a two-run inning uh, for the Twins. And then Plouffe started banging the ball off the wall. Uh, first to right field ahead of Kristen and then a little bit later on, he'll go left center on a bit of a hanging breaking ball there from Kyle Hendricks. Last year, Trevor Kluf hit 40 doubles to finish fourth in the American League, and he's among the league leaders in that department this year as well. And you're right, the Twins 23 and 12 in this ballpark. They've won their last three in a row. The Cubs could only muster four hits last night, but two of those were home runs from Anthony Rizzo. Yeah, some positive signs from Rizzo uh, lately. He's been in a little bit of a mini funk, uh, four out of his last 24, but three of those four have left the ballpark. A long home run the other night in Cleveland, and then for the second time this year, a multi home run game for Rizzo. That's the ninth time in his career he's hit two in a ball game. Cubs drop to 500 on the road. They're five over overall this season, and we'll talk about today's starting pitching matchup. The Cubs have their ace on the mound. We come back. is being brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at mbusa.com. By DeVry University, different on purpose. By American Family Insurance, insure carefully, dream fearlessly. By Jeep, come discover great deals during the Jeep Drive and Discover event. And by Southwest Airlines, book your low fare now at southwest.com. Back here in Minneapolis, we'll be on ABC 7 tomorrow for the series finale as well. And let's get into our Cadillac pitching matchup. John Lester has pitched against the Twins before and coming off one of his better outings of the season. Yeah, real good work from Lester last time out against Cincinnati. He's not had a lot of luck against the Twins, especially here in this ballpark. He's 0-2 in this yard with an ERA over 6. At his best when he's pounding the bottom of the strike zone with sinkers and cut fastballs and mixing in the occasional 
curveball. That's a real key for John. He loves that cutter sinker combination, but the curveball is a good pitch for him just to get the hitters off of that heater. That's what he did last time against Cincinnati. He punched out four, didn't walk anybody in that game, and when he's on, he'll get a lot of outs on the ground. Yeah, Lester said that's kind of what I'm all about, that last start. If he can replicate that, he'll be in very good shape. The Cubs facing Right-hander Trevor May for the first time. This is his 22nd Major League start. Yeah, he was originally sent to AAA, but in the rotation due to injury, and he's he's done pretty well up and down the year, but lately, pretty solid stuff from May. The last five starts, two and two, with a 3.19 earned run average. Cubs have dropped two in a row. They have not lost three straight since early May. And May's on the mound for the Twins. Maybe that's a good omen. Lineups in the first pitch are coming up next. Definition broadcast is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Well, let's take a look at our keys to the game. Well, turn the page. Yeah, the Cubs struggled in uh, every department yesterday. Didn't hit well aside from Rizzo, a little sloppy defensively. Kyle Hendricks had a rough start, so need to move on from that. And they've been able to do that lately when. Uh, coming off a tough loss and beware of Torrey Hunter. Torrey Hunter with very good numbers in his career against John Lester. He and uh, Joe Maurer both solid stuff against Lester. That's our Mercedes keys to the ball game. Set the umpires for you. Manny Gonzalez will work the plate. Paul Schreiber is at first. Todd Titchener at second and the crew chief Jim Reynolds. We wore the mask last night. He'll be at third today. We haven't had many matinees here lately. Been a lot of games at night. I would say under the lights, but we have the lights on. Got some rain early this morning. We should be in good shape the rest of the day. And the Twins have taken the field behind big right-hander Trevor May. And the Cubs lineup today brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Fowler, Rizzo, and Bryant, one, two, and three. Chris Coughlin is going to be in the cleanup spot. Look what he's done lately against righties. Starla Castro had that tough night last night. He's at short. Kyle Schwarber, the DH. Chris DeNorfia is in right. David Ross, as per usual, catching John Lester and Addison Russell will hit ninth. Twins uh, defensively, it's brought to you by Nissan, Rosario, Buxton, Hunter, left center, right infield of Ploof, Escobar, Dozier, and Vargas. Kurt Suzuki is behind the plate, and 
Trevor May on the mound, 25 years of age, big fella, 6'5", 240, out of Longview, Washington. He's making his 13th start, four up, five down, a 4.26 ERA. He's got a four-pitch mix, so both a two and a four-seam fastball, curveball and a changeup, and his slider likes the curveball a little bit more than the slide ball. And the first pitch weather for today brought to you by Four Seasons Heating and Air Conditioning. For all the right reasons, call 866 Four Seasons. We've got a clear forecast. That's the number one thing. A west wind at 13 and 77 degrees. It's a little humid, but it's June. Yeah, it's baseball okay. weather. Yep. And again, a sellout today. 36 8 17 here last night. And there are a lot of Cub fans here in this ballpark. They hope to have a lot more to cheer about than they did last night. So here's the switch hitting Dexter Fowler against May, who's facing this Cubs lineup for the first time. Twins put a shift on for Fowler. Only one on the left side of the infield. That's the third baseman, Plouffe. And away we go. Fastball outside. The uh, advanced defensive metrics don't really like the Twins. They've been playing solid defensively in just terms of errors, especially lately, eight consecutive games without a miscue. For the Twinkies. May will go you know, 90 to 93 with that fastball. Pretty good arm side run on his two seamer. Curveball might be his best pitch. The ball hammered down the right field line, but foul. Home run distance, but he pulled it too much. They got away with one here. They're trying to crowd Fowler, and that fastball's middle in, not in. In. Here's the changeup. That's low. It's three and two. Rizzo on deck. He homered two times last night. As JD mentioned, May is from the state of Washington. He wears a size 16 shoe. He's 6'5, 240. I had grown big up there. Another payoff delivery, and this one sliced to left. Over in the corner, Rosario, and he can't make the play. It lands foul, and we'll do it again. So Fowler a bid for a home run that was fouled down the right field line. Now, potential extra base hit Ben's foul down the left field line. Having a good at bat, making Bay, uh, May work hard here. Twins wearing their alternate home pinstripes that off white marketing back to their first year here in Minnesota after they moved from Washington. I like it. Yeah I do too. Good look. Mm -hmm. Another fly ball Buxton ranging toward left center with the sunglasses on. Good battle. May wins it. And here comes Rizzo. Added 24 points to his slugging percentage last night with his ninth career two homer performance. In there for a strike. It's hard to find a, a stat or a split that does not favor Anthony Rizzo. <laughs> no, when you look at the, you know, the leaderboard, he's among the top 10 in just about everything, including road batting average. He's hitting 328 on the road. You saw the, in that graphic, really tearing it up. Lately away from Wrigley. 
Now they deploy the he's not going to bunt shift. We saw him do this last night. With two strikes in the count. Yeah, and it worked. Pulled in the air to right where Tory Hunter, just shy of his 40th birthday, will make the play. And going back to post rain delay the other night in Cleveland, Cubs have had a lot of quiet three up, three down innings. Didn't get anything done against that Cleveland bullpen and Phil Hughes had a lot of clean innings in his start last night. Yeah, we've had a lot of starts and stops here over the last week or so. It's been kind of a strange schedule. But it is what it is. Part of the deal. Four hits in game one. Bryant did not have one that snapped his 14 game hitting streak. I will say in the ball game last night the Cubs did hit into some tough luck in that they hit a lot of balls hard. But people were able to track them down. They were the one two yank to left it's deep. And it's caught on the warning track. We fly ball outs. John Lester to the mound when we return to Mini. They're 16 and 9 against left handed starters. Now their lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Dozier leading the American League in extra base hits. Rosario, that nice base running maneuver last night. Maurer's going to DH today. Plouffe at third. Torrey Hunter with his first action of the set. Suzuki the catcher. Kenny Vargas plays first. Escobar at short. And the rookie Buxton in center. And on the mound for the Cubs this afternoon, the big lefty, uh, also from Washington State, John Lester. John working for the 14th time, four and five with a 399 earned run average. League's bat, league bats 278 against him. First pitch swinging, Brian Dozier pops it up, and Anthony Rizzo makes the catch. He's only 27 pitch complete game pace. Let's take a look at the Cubs defensively. It's brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. Let's go to the outfield. There you'll find Coglin, Fowler, and Denorfia. Moving into the infield, third to first, Chris Bryant, Starlin Castro, Addison Russell, Anthony Rizzo, David Ross behind the plate. 
And as we mentioned, Big John Lester on the mound, in pursuit of his fifth win, first ever in this ballpark. Yeah, five times he's pitched here in Minneapolis at the Dome and here at Target Field, and he's 0-3 with a 6-16 in those outings. Strike one, and Eddie Rosario homered on the first pitch of his career. That ball lined back up the middle and into center for a base hit. His third hit of the series. Pretty tight to home play. That ball actually in on him a little bit. Pushes it on into center field for a base hit. Twins don't run a lot. They were pretty aggressive last night. Let's see if Paul Molitor wants to try to do a little something with Rosario on first. Joe Maurer, a career 316 hitter. That entire career spent with his hometown team. Pretty good lead. Rosario just takes off for second. Throw there. Safe. Throw is just a little bit high, and he got in. Looks like they have decided they're going to run on John today. First movement, he was yeah. he was yeah. off and running. Yeah, and and Lester's very quick to home plate, and Ross throws well. The throw is high. If it's down, they probably have him. So he's five out of six on the year. Meantime, one and zero oh to Mauer. Middle infielder squeezing a little bit, trying to keep the runner honest. One and one. Lester's velocity will fluctuate between 91 and 95. Right. 93 that time. One of three games currently going on. The Blue Jays leading Baltimore in the fifth in Toronto, two to one. And Rangers and White Sox just underway, scoreless in the first. The White Sox have dropped eight straight. Rosario dancing around out there off second base, trying to distract Lester. Swing and a miss on the cutter. Boy, that pitch had great action. Really big lead, just a lot of activity out there. Did you happen to see uh, Kike Hernandez the other day? The, uh, yeah. for the Dodgers. He mm -hmm. was doing that off of third in the bottom of the ninth in a scoreless tie, and Keone Kella of the Rangers balked. That was a balk off win to end the game. Yeah. Full count on Maurer. Ploof is on deck. He walked him. Hey, Cub fans, let's go. The Cubs are heating up. So is the weather. Make plans to enjoy a game inside beautiful Wrigley Field. The Cubs are back home this Monday, June 22nd. For a short four game homestand with the Dodgers. Tickets are still available. Make sure you visit Cubs.com today. Ploof had the big game at the plate. He had two doubles, knocked in four, but also had two base running gaffes. Kind of lost in the shuffle since they won the game seven to two. We talked about Paul Molitor being such a great base runner. Molitor. It actually worked with Plouffe on his base running when he was in the minors and here at the big league level. So they had a laugh about it, which you can do when you win by yeah, five. Apparently it didn't stick. Huh? On the ground to Castro, it's short. The flip to Russell for one. They're going to turn it. Six to four to three. So unable to turn it in the first inning yesterday, but they do it today.
On ABC7 is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Great to have you with us. John Lester gave up a hit, a walk, but a 6-4-3 double play ball. Allowed him to get out of the inning with no damage. Foul strike on Chris Coughlin. Well, just three batters into this ball game. It's difficult to draw any big conclusions, but it looks like May is going to be pretty aggressive with that fastball. So Cub hitter should have some pitches to swing at here this afternoon. Bounce past the mound, but right to the shortstop. Escobar. They got a piece of him. For an upcoming schedule, we're here tomorrow on ABC 7 and then back home to play the Dodgers for four. And then right back to the road. The road goes on forever and the party never ends. Well, stretch of uh, competition against good clubs. First place Dodgers, first place Cardinals. And then the first place Mets. At least that's where they all stand today. Mets hanging on by half a game over the Nats. Stay down. All right, nice play. Didn't have to backhand that ball, but it's all right. The 0 2 to Castro is spoiled. May was drafted out of high school in the fourth round in 2008 by the Phillies, taken one slot after Jason Kipnis went to the Padres. Kipnis did not sign that year. May went 11 and 1 his senior year at Kelso High School to help get that team to the state championship game. Ploof with a strong throw to get Castro. That's five up, five down for Trevor May. Trevor May was also the valedictorian of his uh, senior class. Ploof gathers himself over the top of the good, strong four seamer across the diamond. It's uh, the goal. Ideally, if you have time, you like to get that grip, a uh, four seam grip, so the ball will fly straight and true. Strike called on Kyle Schwarber. Well, now they're shifting. Now they got the after strike one rotation going on. And rolled foul. If you like prospects, this is a fun series for you. These are guys in these two organizations. So going into 2015, according to Baseball America, six of the top 19 prospects. Are in these two organizations, and the top three in all of baseball are in the lineup today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a flood of young talent coming to the big leagues in recent weeks and months. Jorge Soler currently on the Cubs DL as Schwarber went after a high one. Miguel Sano may be here at some point later this year. Scoreless early.
John Lester against a nemesis Tory Hunter 14 for 28 against him in the regular season including the postseason 16 out of 41 for a 390 average. Hunter recently served a two game suspension. His actions during a game last week against Kansas City. He had the home plate umpire Mark Ripperger did not see eye to eye. And then tearing yeah. off his jersey yeah, and throwing it onto the field. Went into meltdown mode. The 0 2 from Lester see on ya. the outside corner. So Lester wins this battle. Beautiful execution by Lester. Get the swing and miss on the slow curveball, and then paints the outside corner. Just dots it. A little Picasso right there. Xfinity pitch tracks with a pretty good illustration of Lester working over Tory Hunter. Uh, the catcher, Kurt Suzuki, one for four, and a run scored last night. Not gonna hold it. And it's one nothing twins. Up a tank shot. That's an ambush there from Suzuki, his third home run of the year. Let's take a look at our uh, Toyota home run cam. Like they're trying to crowd him and didn't get it in, didn't get it down, left it out over the plate and up. Tenth one allowed by John this year. 73rd career home run for Suzuki. Four hundred ten feet. Vargas playing first, he's a switch hitter. Cutter strike one and one. Third ball that time missed. Tenth homer allowed this year by Lester. Vargas switch hitter far better. From this side of the plate. Three fifty six as a right handed batter as opposed to one seventy six from the other side. Awkward swing on strike three. Chicago's number one news ABC 7 eyewitness news in the morning weekdays 4 30 to 7 a.m. with Judy Sue and Terrell Brown. Fourteenth start of the year at short for Eduardo Escobar He's played several other positions as well as he grounds to short to end the inning. Kurt Suzuki long homer. It's one nothing twins after two innings.
blog. It's on ABC7.com. Brought to you by Jeff Vukovich, your local nationwide agent serving the area for 37 years. To join the nation, contact Jeff at jeffvuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. One nothing twins bottom three in the Cubs order starting with Chris DeNorfia. Breaking ball strike. From Trevor May. With numbers for DeNorfia. Fairly limited time. He's been on the disabled list twice. With a hamstring strain. Good heater there down around the knees. Maybe maybe pitching to keep his spot in the rotation. Erwin Santana expected back in early July. And he's currently on the suspended list. He got him. Outside corner. A little change piece there, right on right. Borderline low. May gets the call. Norfia hopping mad. Ross has 10 hits. Six of those have been doubles, making his 18th start. Curveball, a little high. That's interesting. So David wears that uh, little cheat sheet on his arm when he's catching with the little scanning tips, and he's wearing it to hit here. Maybe he needs instructions on what the other team's pitcher will do against yeah, him. Maybe he just changes out the. But he's got enough. Cheat sheet. He's got enough to do to put on all the gear. That's one yeah. other thing you got to take off and put on. Right. Just leave yeah, it on. It's small. You don't want to lose it in the dugout and be fishing for it. Now, if he's out to dinner tonight wearing that. Yeah, he'll be peeking at it and going, oh, looks like I should have the uh, sirloin tip tonight. The fastball had some rising action. It's not a strikeout staff here. May leads their team in strikeouts and strikeout rate. But he's just about league average with his strikeout rate. But he can get some swings and misses with that high heater. Drill down into deep center. Buxton has some room. Again, 4 11 just to the left of straightaway center. MLB.TV Premium is number one for streaming live sports. Watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Yeah, straight away, boy, you really got to juice it to get it out of here. The deepest part of the ballpark out there, a little notch in left center, and just, just off straightaway center field. The, Ball will carry pretty well from the 377 mark in left center to the left field foul line. Packed house today here. Beautiful target field. Ground ball in the right. And the Cubs have their first hit with two outs in the third. Russell had a good night last night. He one out of three. He also hit a sharp line drive that was caught to right field. Stays inside that one nicely. Delivers a sharp single. Hey, I like what they've done with this ballpark with the big dimension straight away and the high wall and right. It's going to lead to a lot of doubles and triples, and I think those are. For me, that, that's more exciting than balls leaving the ballpark. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Line short left, and it'll drop in front of Rosario. So the Cubs are back to back two out singles for Anthony Rizzo. Right man in the right place. A couple of long ones last night. Fowler had a very good at bat last time. Hit some balls hard, but foul this time. A little flare settles in for him for a knock.
Pitch to Rizzo. Is yanked foul. Let's check out the league leaders brought to you by DeVry University. Runners in scoring position. Since June 5th, the Cubs leading the National League. Problem was last night they went 0 for 0. Twins went 4 for 17. It's a large discrepancy in opportunities. Strike called. Yeah, Twins ruled the time of possession last night. It was if it was a hockey game, Cup fans would have been yelling, "Get it out of the zone!" And of course, he would not have been very good. That's the puck possession stat. Yeah. Rizzo shortening yeah, up with mode. two strikes. Yep. Shorten up, quiet down the lower body, use the hands. The cutter from Hughes. See ya. That one was beefy. Another 0 2. That's a fair ball. Russell's going to score. Foul in the third. Rizzo hustling towards second. Throw goes there. He's safe. And we're tied at one. Up on his toes to get that high fastball. And you're not going to have any luck if you try to pull this pitch. He got on top of it. Lashed it to left. And we are tied. On an 0 2 offering. Three straight two out hits. So he is now 7 out of 20. That's a 350 batting average on an 0 2 count. Brian Rizzo have both been really good with runners in scoring position this year. You don't want that one. Where'd you get some major league averages? 0 oh, 2. 134. 161. Bryant strikes out. So those guys don't do much in that spot, but Rizzo with the big hit, and it's 1 1.
Anthony Rizzo with an off field double tying the ball game at 1 1. And this is the young uh, phenom for the twins. Byron Buxton taking his first at bat of the day. Called up just a few days ago. Two balls no strikes. Seventh major league game. For Buxton. Tory Hunter has really taken him under his wing. And what a great guy to. Learn from foul past third. I asked Tory Hunter, who is who is your guy when you you came up? First name he mentioned was Paul Molitor. That's right. He's now playing for his former teammate, Matt Lawton. Another name that came up. So Hunter now trying to impart his wisdom to the 21 year old Buxton. He said, not just baseball. Just the daily grind of being a big leaguer all that is involved and it's a lot more than what happens between 105 and 4 p.m. today for instance. Three and two. Yeah, you got to learn important things like make sure you tip the bellman. Yep. Don't be afraid to spend that meal money. Make sure you're at the ballpark on time. Dealing with the media, all kinds of stuff. Swing and a miss, strike three. And probably more than anything, how to deal with failure and disappointment. Yeah, because there's plenty coming every player's way. Let's look at today's National League Central standings brought to you by the Bob LaCorsio Auto Group, the Cardinals leading the way right now by five over the Pirates who had their Winning streak snapped last night. Eight gamer came to an end with a 4 1 loss in Washington. Strike called on Dozier. Uh, in terms of handling the media, uh, I know we sang Paul Molitor's praises as a player last night. He was great with the media for this reason. And I covered the Brewers when I was just a kid toward the end of his tenure there. And I, I said this to him today when the clubhouse opened to the media Paul Molitor sat at his locker and was ready for the media every day right when it opened they'd get their two to three minutes with him and then they wouldn't bother him the rest of the afternoon just get it over with yeah then they don't chase you around yeah. you don't have to hide yeah. I just especially if you're that guy there's always one or two guys in every club that the media wants to check in with to get their take on things yeah. never made anybody chase just do it and talking with their people here the other thing he doesn't do that his players seem to appreciate is he does not constantly refer to his playing days. He's no longer a player he's a manager and when you're a Hall of Famer it would be very easy to go well here's what I did. Yeah and you could really alienate the guys in your clubhouse with that approach. There's some Hall of Famers whether it's managing or pitching coach hitting coach who just have not been able to do that they haven't been able to check themselves and you know, maybe it was easy for them but it's not easy for the average player. One and two on Dozier. 22 doubles tied for the major league lead. An extreme pull hitter. Also hits the ball out of the ballpark a fair bit. 13 times he came into this game batting 264 good enough to lead their club in batting average. Now batting average can be an overrated stat but. I don't know what the lowest batting average is for a team leader but that's got to be amongst them. It's got to be. Yeah. So he leads the American League with 38 extra base hits. The last second baseman to lead the AL with extra base hits was Alfonso Soriano with the Yankees in 02. Before that, you got to go back to 1945. So it's just not a position where you expect to get these kind of power numbers. He's a keystone man, right? Second base. Mm -hmm. 
He has popped out to Rizzo twice. Chicago Cubs baseball on ABC 7 is brought to you by Mercedes Benz. Check out our exciting model lineup by visiting your local authorized Mercedes Benz dealer or visit us today at MBUSA.com. Saturday matinee from the Twin Cities. Back with you tomorrow, same time, same two teams. Jake Arietta, Kyle Gibson, right handers here on ABC 7. We're going back to back on ABC 7. Uh -huh. My advice to the station would be get your rest tonight. Start doing this every day. You got to conserve your energy. Every day, yep. Yeah. Bryant in at third and the 1 0. Make sure you got a good, strong cup of coffee waiting for you in the morning. Suzuki with the second inning home run. That's the Twins run. The Cubs tied it in the top of this third on an Anthony Rizzo double. Swing and a miss. Lefty to lefty. Two and two. Unless you're kind of an old school drop and drive type pitcher. You know, normally we see a big tall guy to get a hold of him early and say, hey, stay on top, stay tall, and drive the ball down in the zone. Uh, but but Lester's kind of old school the way he breaks down that back leg. And he's built for it. He's a sturdy young guy. Strong legs, tireless worker. And Rosario waves at strike three. They go down in order for the first time. Seven Eyewitness News weeknights at 10 with Ron Majors, Kathy Brock, Cheryl Burton, Jerry Taft, and Mark Gian Greco. Strike called on Chris Coglin. He's batting in the cleanup spot today. 
Oh, for four in the series, but coming in 378 his last 11 games. With two strikes, the Twins overshift. May with the 0-2 is hit foul. Yeah, Conlon trying to exploit that opening now on the left side. Well, everybody in the game shifts now, some more than others. Uh, what we're seeing from the the Twins here in this series, a lot of mid count shifting. We don't see a whole lot of that. He's trying to guide that one the other way. Foul tip, strike three. Fourth punch out for Trevor May. Pretty good curveball right there. Good tight spin. Castro grounded to third his first time up. Good topic of conversation. This his mental gaffe in the first inning on defense. Allowed the Twins to get an extra run. Said no excuses. It was bad. Should never have happened. Should not happen. He apologized to his teammates. And we move on. That ball will drop. This kind of ladled out in the right. Those who couldn't get it. Right off the end of the bat. That's the thing of beauty there. Get a knock with that. Nice effort by Dozier. And the DH Schwarber. Oh, for four in the set. Six for 14. Since coming up from double A. They hit the ball sharply once. In the ball game last night, struck out. We're starting to work him up in the zone with fastballs. We'll see if he's able to either lay off that pitch or get on top of it. Off the plate inside, two and zero. Oh. Well, May came up with the Phillies. He was their minor league pitcher of the year in 2011. And then was their top prospect going into 2012. Q shot and Schwarber's going to reach on a swinging bunt single. How about the two hits in this inning? He's got to be scratching his head. You got to be kidding me. It's a perfect pitch with a breaking ball to Castro. He hits it off the end of the bat. And now, this thing, this little cue shot from Schwarber. They struggled in 2012. At uh, the double A level in the Phillies chain, his stock may have dropped as a result at a 487 ERA. He was then traded prior to 2013 here with uh, Vance Worley for Ben Revere. And then made his major league debut with the Twins last season. 1 0 on DeNorfield. Foul tip. Hey, look at those little creatures. I don't think Chris saw them. Chopper pass Gary Jones at third. One one tie here in the fourth.
Mm. Well, that was a changeup. It was about thigh high right over the middle of the plate, but Murphy out in front a little bit. Not where you want to leave that pitch ideally. He got away with it. He's had some tough luck in this inning and he got a little, a little fortunate there that Denorfi didn't do more with that pitch. Castro at second, Schwarber with a big lead at first. A short hop pick by Plouffe, and they'll go around the horn, 5 4 3, and that will get Trevor May out of the fourth inning. Bottom four, still 1 1. On scoreboard, it's brought to you by Jeep. Battle of the Birds in Toronto, 2-2. Rangers and White Sox early on. Nothing, nothing. I often have this debate by saying it's scoreless. Invariably, a fan will check in and say it's not scoreless. The score is 0-0. True, but well, yeah. when you say scoreless, you know what that sure, means. Yeah, sure. You know, you know how some people are. Those people. Joe Maurer, 329 lifetime versus the National League. He walked his first time up. DHing today. No longer the force he once was. Power numbers way down in recent seasons. Uh, everything down right now. His batting average is off. Suspect that'll pick up. When you compare him to other American League first basemen, he's way, near, way down near the bottom offensively. He struck him out looking. Join the Cubs for the 2015 uh, Youth Baseball and Softball Appreciation Night as they take on the Dodgers so this coming Wednesday. That's the 24th. Tickets will be in a special section, and each attendee receives a special Cubs rope twist necklace. For more information, visit cubscom special events. Plouffe hit into a double play in the first, off the end of the bat, right down the left field line. Foul.
May I hand out some plaudits today? Sure. I don't think we do enough plaudits. Plot it away. I don't think we use that word enough. Uh, today's plot it goes out to David Price. Oh. oh, and two. Why? Yes, why? Because he admitted that he checks Instagram, Instagram and Twitter during the game, just like Pablo Sandoval did. He told TMZ Sports that and some other things, but I just appreciate the fact that we know a lot of guys do that. They just don't admit it. So he just doesn't hit like. He didn't like to yeah, kind of show people that he he's didn't doing leave a footprint. But he's a starting pitcher, pitches every five or six days. You can't ask a guy like that to not do it, right? Well, you can. You can, sure. but and I mean, what's the harm? I guess would right. be, be, be my point. I mean. Um, you know, some clubs are more um, finicky is not the right word, but care more about some of those things than others. Not hit hard, Bryant will get him. Watch the show everyone in Chicago is talking about Chicago's most watched local talk show, Windy City Live, weekdays at 11, only on ABC7. As a starting pitcher, you pitch every fifth day, so you have a lot of downtime. Uh, so ideally, you like to have your pitchers out there in the dugout cheering on their teammates and, you know, paying attention to the game. Maybe you can pick something up. But most starting pitchers in the course of a game will drift up into the clubhouse for a little while, check in on the boys up there, see what Otis is up to. Maybe grab a snack. Swing and a miss by Hunter. And the whole dust up in Boston a couple years back with the whole chicken and beer thing going on. That was probably a little extreme. <laughs> but if they but were... for those of us who have been around the game a long time, you know, the chicken part of it, I would, the beer part, no, but the chicken part of it didn't really surprise me. Well, if they were a 109 game winner that year, everybody would have thought it was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the other stuff. That doesn't have anything to do with what's going on down on the field. It only matters if you're really good or really bad. If you're really good, it's deemed to be this bonding thing. And if you're really bad, it's deemed to be a huge distraction. Lack of focus, yeah. Right. Called strike three. Lester has struck out Hunter both times. 1 1. Presented by authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. 
And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. David Ross swings and misses. John Lester settling in. He has retired eight in a row since the Suzuki homer. And Ross gets a hold of one out into deep right center. And it's going to be off the wall. Eleventh hit and his seventh double. Man, he goes up there and his philosophy is swing hard, right? Just get aggressive. He's not feeling for the ball. He put a pretty good charge in one last time. Hit a deep drive to center field. They are able to run under. This time right center with authority and it's a leadoff double for David Ross. Chug it hard. If the Cubs can cash it in. Two balls, no strikes on Addison Russell. May has been a little bit better of late in terms of pitching deeper into ball games. Early on, that was not the case. The Twins bullpen in good shape here because Phil Hughes went eight innings last night. Back to the seats on the left field line. Cubs went out and got the A's top prospect in the Samarja Hamill deal almost a year ago. And he's become a big part of this 2015 Cubs team. He just got hit. Two on, nobody out for the top of the lineup. And they're getting their third look at the young right hander. So a real chance here to do some damage. A two seam fastball got away from May. This little pays a price, but takes his base. Dollars had some good swings here today. Looks like he sees the ball pretty well against Trevor May. I suppose ironically Trevor's worst month this season was May in terms of his ERA 443 in April 552 in May down to 2.00 and three starts so far in June. He's in some trouble here in the fifth. Fowler bunch through it. Next we've got to work from behind now. Uh, yeah, uh, his first start this month in Boston, seven innings of two hit shutout baseball. He struck out nine. Six innings of one run ball against Kansas City. Last time out, five innings, five hits, three runs to the Cardinals. Pulled and caught, and yeah. Ross is going to be doubled off second. Just a freeze on the liner, but David thought that ball was going to get past Vargas. It did not. And that's a huge play for the Twins. That ground ball double play to end the last inning. Uh, this one a little less conventional. A rocket off the bat of Fowler. Heck of a play by the big guy Vargas. And David Ross just getting a little overly aggressive there. Rizzo off the end of the bat, a one bouncer to the shortstop Escobar on the other side of the bag, and just like that, the inning is over.
on ABC7 is being brought to you by Disney Pixar's comedy adventure Inside Out from the creators of Up. Meet the little voices inside your head in 3D now playing. That's all right. Lose a hot dog, just keep eating the yeah, bun. Yeah, I love that. I love that approach. It's a game of adjustments, and that little man dropped the dog, but he stayed on the bun. Lester in on uh, Suzuki, who took him deep his first time up. This is beautiful. See, the dog goes. In a brief moment, thinks it over. Says, nah, I'm good. Let's we're just good. keep working on the bun. It's still working. We're, we're in good shape. That's how Kobayashi got his start. <laughs> just, just don't give up. Just keep going. Might be an infraction, though. Yeah, I don't know if he get credit for that. Yeah. One one hit hard and foul. You know, John has been down all afternoon long, uh, with few exceptions. One of them was the elevated fastball that Suzuki jumped on him first pitch fastball. It was almost like that was a, just a reminder to John. Wait a minute, get back downstairs, and he's been uh, dominant since then. Hasn't been a ball out of the infield since the Suzuki home run. Came in the second one, one out. Just tried to crowd him, left it out over the plate. Second decker for Suzuki. So 10 home runs allowed by John Lester this year. Nine of them have been solo shots. Yeah, you don't ever want to give up a home run if you're a pitcher, but if you do, you'd rather have it be with nobody on. Vargas and Escobar to follow for the Twins in the bottom of the fifth. Got some good Cubs minor league notes for you today. We'll start with the pitching since Lester's working right now. Frank Batista, Double A Tennessee, is now seven and two with a 1.70 earned run average. Strike three called. Give him seven on the day. His last three have been looking. Well, backdoor cutter works its way back to the outside corner. No dispute from Suzuki. Right-hander Don Roach at Triple A Iowa, seven and one with a 2.29 ERA. Swing and a miss by Vargas back to double A Tennessee Billy McKinney yesterday five for five and a double header. Mike Olt has joined the Smokies on a rehab assignment coming back from the fractured wrist. Rizzo will get it to Lester for the out. On Friday September 11th the Zach Brown band is coming back to Wrigley Field for their Jekyll and Hyde tour tickets are on sale now at Cubs.com slash Zach Brown band don't miss your chance to see the three time Grammy award winning ZBB at Wrigley Field Cubs.com slash Zach Brown band Little Beach Pelicans playing a double header today and they need one win. In the final three games of the first half to clinch the Southern Division title, the first half title. So the magic number is down to one. Mark Zagunas, four for four, two homers last night. The Eugene Emeralds, the new Northwest League affiliate of the Cubs, two games into its season. Ian Happ, the Cubs' first round pick this year, made his pro debut, went one for five. So congrats to Ian Happ on the start of his journey. Yeah, he did, did not waste long getting that contract signed. Anxious to get his professional career started. Here's the 2-0 pitch. 
Well, three balls no strikes to Escobar Buxton on deck. Escobar has made starts at short left. DH third and second this season for the twins. Good 3 0 pitch there by Lester plenty of the plate but kept it down. Twins tied with the Yanks 37 and 30 leading the American League wild card Cubs are tied with the Giants for the second spot two percentage points ahead of the Giants I guess Cubs 35 and 30 San Francisco 37 and 32 after beating the Dodgers in L.A. last night 9 5 Buster Posey did a grand slam so the Giants are now 8 and 2. Versus L.A. in a game and a half back in the West. Towards center and through. Snaps a string. A ten in a row retired by Lester. There's been a culture that's been in place here in Minnesota for a long time. It started with Tom Kelly. Passed through Ron Gardenhire. Watch this base running here by Escobar. What appears to be a routine base hit to center field. He is selling out going down the line. Ready to take advantage of any kind of a miscue out there in the outfield. That's how you run the bases. Yeah, good stuff. Buxton's two out of 21. Small sample size, but this. Trying to get settled in here. Maybe a little anxious at times at the plate, but you can certainly understand. And not uncommon for even the most talented of young players to come to the big leagues and deer head, uh, caught in the headlights look about them as they settle in. Everything's so new, every ballpark's new, facing new pitchers. 21 plate appearances. No walks now, eight strikeouts. One of his two hits, a triple. That gives him 13 overall combined with his minor league numbers. Rick Stelmasek, a Chicago guy, longtime coach here in Minnesota, he used to refer to the third deck syndrome. Players coming from the minor leagues to the big leagues, getting to the big ballparks. And all the bells and whistles and bright lights it can be a little daunting. One and two the count. Runner goes. Buxton fouls. <laughs> Crowd is booing. I'm not sure why. Yeah, they, they thought that there was a stolen base here. They failed to realize that there was a foul ball. Well, yeah, it was a pretty obvious foul ball. Come on, Twins fans. You should know better. We're focusing on the base runner. You would think Escobar will be going again here, right? Buxton down in the count. If he ends up leading off the next He's inning, not the worst thing for them. And he'll get the bag without a throw. It's a good pitch. It was a breaking ball. Ross realized he wasn't going to have a chance. He didn't come out of his crouch, just made sure he caught the pitch. Oh, 
Go ahead run now in scoring position. Good lead by Escobar. If you look at the numbers for David Ross in terms of his throwing, you would say, well, gee, he's not throwing anybody out. Well, he's catching John Lester, who's been very easy to run on. It's 20 steals on John this year. Three have been caught. Ball four, so that's the first walk. Buxton has taken at this level. Top of the fifth, the Cubs looked like they were poised to have a big inning, came away with nothing after the line drive double play. Bottom of the fifth inning, two quick outs, nobody on. It looked like it was going to be an easy inning for Lester all of a sudden. Twins uh, put a couple of base runners on for a dangerous hitter. Who leads all major league second basemen in homers, RBIs, and doubles? Definitely have to put him in that all star mix. I figure uh, Glenn Perkins out of their bullpen will make the club. Perkins perfect in save chances this year. Yeah, and um, the other numbers are really good too. Got a 153 ERA. 076 in the save chances. What am I talking about? We're trying to put twins on the American League All Star team. It's going to be the Royals, right? Yeah. And a few other yeah. guys. Uh -huh. Although yeah. every team has to be represented. I, by the way, have no problem with Royals fans voting for their own players. It's the way the system works. It's a bad system. Change the system if you want to rectify it. Well, there's, I saw a link or a story the other day, but there's been a, been a, bunch, a bunch of votes have been discounted now. Yes. Hanging chads. No, I'm not sure why they were not allowed. I think you're allowed to vote up to 35 times or something, but yeah, some ineligible votes have been thrown out. No, when I was a kid. Do we have a recall? Yeah, I don't know. Be a Maybe quick recall. Be, yeah. Well, let's get the Supreme Court involved in this. Kansas City v. MLB court case 105.2. No, I was a kid. What it would be? It would be a fan. It would be like Joel Smith versus yeah. it would be like a class guy supporting suit. his guy. Yes. So when you were a kid suing Dozier for Dozier <laughs> as opposed to Infante when I was a kid going to the ballpark in Montreal I used to punch out the paper ballot. Yeah, I did too. And I took it very seriously. I, I didn't vote for my favorite guys. I voted for the guys that I thought were most deserving. But you know, every team now has this campaign to vote for our guys. And so if that's the way the system is going to be, yeah, you can't blame the Royals fans. Good Warming battle put, here. Uh, Buddy Bianca on in the All Star game. Golf to left. Let's see if Coglin has some room over there. He does not. That low side wall. And even if they don't score, take a little bit of a bite out of John here in this inning when it looked like it was going to be an awfully quick one for him. Him to throw some extra pitches on a pretty warm, muggy day. Escobar at second, Buxton at first. Two out rally here for the Twins in this inning. Castro will come in and make the catch.
to end the inning. They strand two, one, one after five. Today's action, or you just want to hear JD's jokes one more time, ABC7 will rebroadcast each one of their Cubs matchups on the Live Well Network this afternoon's Encore. The Cubs Twins will be aired in its entirety beginning at 7 p.m. on ABC's digital channel 7.2 and the following cable channel positions. One, one, sixth inning. Chris Bryant. In a 1 1 count. He is on a pace to drive in over 100 runs. Not too many rookies do that. I'm guessing you have some uh, information to support that. I don't. Oh, just I thought you did. I was I was waiting I for the. No. As a matter of fact, it's only been done. No, I don't. But I'm sure we could find yeah, it. Yeah, now you got me. I'm <laughs> going to the Google machine here. Close, but didn't get it. Three and two. Coglin on deck. Works better if you put RBI as opposed to BBI. I'll try that again. That's a leadoff walk. A good at bat. A little floating change up. Take a look at our Xfinity pitch tracks. Uh, working away from Brian. And he's, he's gotten away with some bad change ups here today. First walk he's allowed. Ted Williams had 145 in 1939. Yeah, but that's Ted Williams. Yeah. Uh, 48 times a rookie has knocked in 100. Jose Abreu did it last year. For the White Sox. Well, I don't know what I pulled up. I got some site here saying that uh, only four guys have done it other than Williams. 
I've got the. I must have a, uh, a bad sight. That's a that big discrepancy. Foul. You got 48 guys. 48. This side is saying Hal Trotsky, Trotsky, Dale Alexander, Albert Pujols, and Joe DiMaggio, along with Teddy Ballgame. Yeah, well, Abreu last year. Well, yeah. right. yep. I have to send a letter to that site from 1978 or something. I don't or? know. Some. Uh, I just clicked on this link. That can be dangerous. <laughs> From deep right field is the name of the the site. Conklin with an aggressive hack that time one and two. I think I found the answer to your note. Mm -hmm. Abreu joined Trotsky, Williams, and Pujols as the only rookies to have 30 doubles, 30 homers, and 100 RBIs. So maybe there's another component to that RBI category. There have been four White Sox rookies to get to 100 knocked in. Bryant goes, Coglin fouls. Ron Kittle, he had a big rookie Ron year. Ron Kittle did it, yep. 1983. So it actually it's happened more often than I thought. It still would be a nice milestone. And if Chris is batting behind Anthony Rizzo the rest of the year, that'll help his cause. Yes, because as we pointed out often, the RBIs are a team stat, really. It's a function of opportunity as much as anything. Maybe not as much. Still got to drive them in, but it's a big, big piece of it. Long pause by May at the belt. And now step off. Another check on Bryant. Probably could have a bigger lead. He got back with no trouble. Not running. That's in the right. Bryant makes the turn on his way to third. Another great chance here. Cubs had first and second, nobody out in the fifth. First and third, nobody out now in the sixth. Yeah, tie ball game here in the sixth. We'll see how Paul Molitor chooses to play his infield. Good swing here by Coglin. It's ball hard his first time up, but bounced off the pitcher to the second baseman for an out. Last time will punch out here. A solid single to right, and Bryant. Scoots on over to third. Twins will play for two in the middle of the diamond. It's interesting, Trevor Plouffe. Uh, Trying to eavesdrop a little bit. Every time Gary Jones and Chris Bryant get together, Plouffe walks over just to see if he can pick up anything. Swing and a miss. Oh and two. Up. Yes, comes under the category of doing your due diligence. See if you can.
Now Bryant should be going on contact here. Ground ball. He should be trying to score because the Twins are playing for two. Big strikeout for May. That's the first out, and it'll bring up Schwarber. Not the pitch he wanted to make. It backed up on him, but got the swing and miss from Castro. Let's see if Kyle Schwarber, the rookie, can come up with a big hit. Doesn't need a hit necessarily. He's got to drive something to the outfield to get this go ahead run in. Mm, good fastball there, 94, down around the knees. May's been impressive today. The Cubs have put a lot of pressure on him, but he's been able to work out of jams. Center cut on that one. Twins do have some action in their bullpen. Ryan Presley, a right hander, is up. Cubs have had very few chances. And all of the runners in scoring position opportunities have been today. There's Presley. It's Eddie Guadardo out there, the bullpen coach for the Twins, a longtime closer. It's, it's been a chase pitch here for Kyle the last couple of ball games. Needs to get it down a little bit. If you catch up to it, it's going to go a long way. Walking a single to start the inning. Castro then punched out, and it's one and two to Schwarber. These are valuable at bats for Kyle Schwarber, and even more valuable for his team. Overly aggressive there in an RBI spot, and May took advantage. Two outs. No, you don't want that one. No, they just kept going higher and higher. And he's going to see a bunch of that until he learns to lay off of it. And you know the indication when you look at his numbers and what we've seen of him for the most part, he, he doesn't chase many bad balls. He's just a little anxious there, or well, more than a little. To Norfia with two outs. Swing and a miss. Well, he's got a chance to be a hero here and pick up Castro and Schwarber after their strikeouts. Two on, two down, two strikes on DeNorfia. May has a sign from Suzuki. Here it comes. One and two. Maybe start Coglin here. Well, he almost balked. Yep, there goes Coglin. Pitch is high, and he held. Pretty good chance there that two strike count that they weren't going to throw through and risk an errant throw. And Coglin able to take advantage, and now the North has the chance to drive in too. Did not go. Coglin with his fifth steal.
The arm action on that changeup must be really good. Because we've seen him now a number of times leaving that changeup up in the zone and he's gotten away with it. So it's really a great deception. One oh two to three two for DeNorfield. Ross on deck, so May does have a base open. Another changeup. He walked him. Bring out Neil Allen, the pitching coach. On a Thursday this coming week, the 25th, Cubs play the Dodgers. First pitch is at 120. Oh, this will be fun. Come see Paddington. He's a bear. And Clark, he's a bear. They're going to celebrate Paddington's birthday. The first 10,000 fans will receive a coupon good at local retailers for $2 off a Paddington Blu ray combo pack. Purchase tickets for the game, visit Cubs.com. There's David Ross. Bases loaded. Now, this is interesting. He leaned heavily on that changeup to DeNorfia. Ross likes to ambush that first pitch fastball. I would think breaking ball to get started here. Yep. And a good one. Location has, has not been good in this inning. He's clearly running on fumes. The boy made a good pitch there. Under duress, he has stayed away from the fastball. That was a changeup, a perfectly placed one. He's trying to grab the lead for the first time. Pitch number 101, and he's going to get out of the inning.
anything's possible moment and Trevor May got into some major trouble first and third nobody out ended up striking out three to get out of the sixth inning and it might be it for him today every winning story starts with a ticket what will yours be Illinois lottery anything's possible so we remain tied at one and Lester will face two three four starting with Eddie Rosario. Yeah, when you look at those swings and all all three of those at bats, just Cubs a little overly anxious. Starting with the bat swing at a at the breaking ball, Schwarber went way out of the zone with a high fastball, and, and David Ross fooled by the, the changeup down out of the zone. Frustrating day for the Cubs hitters as they as they have had numerous opportunities, haven't been able to cash in. John Lester has not been under a lot of pressure here this afternoon. Curveball bounced foul. It was last inning, but got Dozier in that soft little line drive to short to finish the inning. Ross has dirt in the eye or something in his eye. Chicago Cubs baseball on ABC 7 is being brought to you by the Bob LaCorsio Auto Group. You're going to like buying a car this way. J. Mainville still helping out Ross. It's no fun. Meanwhile, the uh, Pirates and Nationals will be getting underway shortly, and Bryce Harper is in the Washington lineup. Liriano and Scherzer in a, a great mound matchup. Scherzer coming off a 16 strikeout performance. Harper had been day to day with a strained left hamstring. Ground ball to the second baseman Russell up with it short throw out number one. Joe Maurer will climb in. In the bottom of the ninth the Rogers Center five two Orioles over the Blue Jays. Orioles put up three in the top of the ninth to uh, grab the lead. Joseph and Machado with the run scoring hits. A tightly bunched pack in the AL East, uh, except for the Red Sox. They're nine back. Everybody else within four of Tampa, who leads the way right now. One one to Mauer. A lot of people thought Boston would be the class of that division. It's and just the opposite. The Yankees have been a surprise. Team to keep an eye on from for my money is the Blue Jays if they acquire some pitching to go along with that lineup. Alfredo Simon and Nathan Evaldi tonight in the Bronx, Tigers and Yankees. Bangs that one off the mask of Ross. That is 
it's so jarring. Mauer hit a big home run here the other day to help beat the Cardinals, an off field home run. He's always been a type of hitter who hits the ball to all fields. Carried a lifetime batting average of 319 into this season. Ball four. He has been on twice, both times. Yeah, on walks. He's, he's such command of the strike zone. They ought to lead him off with the on base presence. The fact that he's not hitting the ball for extra bases that much anymore. Be a little unconventional, but certainly a, a move you could support. John keeping the ball down, shooting for that outside corner, but clearly off the plate and not close enough to entice Mauer. Pitch to Plouffe, right to Russell on the ground. The flip to Castro. They turn it four six three, and that's it for the Twins in the sixth. We're tied at one. On ABC 7 is being brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. By Southwest Airlines, book your low fare now at southwest.com. By Toyota, see where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. And by the Bob LaCorsio Auto Group, you're going to like buying a car this way. A 1-1 tie. The Cubs have had the better chances. And they'll now face the Twins bullpen. Right-hander Casey Fien, 31 years old, former Tiger, against Addison Russell. From the stretch. Ball one. 
Yeah, May was uh, resilient, I guess you would say today. He bent, but he did not break. Pitched out of a couple of tough situations, had a couple of big double play balls. Out to the seats. Fiend missed about a month on the DL with a right shoulder strain. Came back on May the 29th. Fastball and cutters and sliders. Since his return from the DL, he has not allowed a run. Eight innings. Over eight appearances. Swing and a miss, strike three. Get your first alert weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Jerry Taft and Meteorologist Cheryl Scott only on ABC 7 Eyewitness News. So Russell strikes out on the cutter, and here is Dexter Fowler. We leave the third baseman, Plouffe. In his normal spot and he's pulled in. Three guys over on the right side of second base. And a strike call. He's one for three today. Six for his last 49. Fowler does lead the club with 44 runs, 11 steals and four triples. And the main leadoff man and center fielder since day one. Just to give away fastball there on 0 2. I get the idea we're not challenging, but two feet off the plate. Well, Plouffe moves back with two strikes. He's out playing a normal shortstop position now. The ball is hit basically right to him. Running throw, kind of what Troy Tulowitzki might do. Now a Mercedes drive of the game took place back in the third inning. It ended up being a double down the left field line on an 0-2 pitch to score Russell. That tied it up. A Mercedes drive of the game. Yeah, one up on his toes that got on top of that uh, armpit high fastball for his 42nd RBI. I kind of prefer underarm. <laughs> Your term just kind of sounds a little, you know, a little funky. I, I had a buddy that went to the University of Pittsburgh and he said when he was in college, that was one of their chants under the arm, under the arm, pit, pit. <laughs> it's the outside corner. Well, hit another homer, Anthony. Hit two last night. Just need one today. Just, just one. I don't think that one's going to go. Vargas to Fee to end the inning. Stretch time here, Target Field, one-one.
a summary not much in terms of scoring but again the Cubs have had their chances John Lester has outlasted Trevor May who saved his biggest pitches for those rough spots Cubs had runners at first and second nobody out of the fifth first and third nobody out in the sixth and he got out of both situations so Lester against Torrey Hunter who has been caught looking twice and we focused on this matchup in our uh, Mercedes Benz keys of the game. You know, Hunter had come into this game with outstanding numbers against John, but Lester has had his number here this afternoon. Hunter was really good in the month of May, as were the Twins. They won 20 ball games in May. Went through a bit of a June swoon. Hunter. Has had his struggles here of late as well. During 100 pitches, that's bounced foul. Ah, you got to knock that ball down. Justin Grimm getting loose. As Lester works into the seventh. Hey, you were doling out plaudits earlier. Is yeah. Being, uh, uh, Pass on some plaudits to the the good folks up here in uh, Minnesota. Whether it's the media relations department or whoever, they're really taking care of us, bringing food into the booth here every day. Yeah, it's been so, very nice. Yeah. And then you got a foot massage in the fourth yeah, inning. That's, yeah, that's you don't get that in most ballparks. Manny Petty, the uh -huh. whole deal. Two two. Count holding. You just have to be aware. You got to make sure you know where Bly Levin is at all times, so you don't get a hot foot. Ross wants this one in the dirt. As Hunter went down to get the curve, and he grounds out to third. Chicago Cubs baseball on ABC 7 is brought to you by DeVry University. Different on purpose. That will be it for John Lester with Suzuki coming up. And remember, Suzuki homered off John back in the second. And John's calling for another ball. He, he wants to stay in this ball game. Joe already made the call. <laughs> can, you, can you make the call and then not do it? I don't believe so. That's why you make the call before you get to the mound because you don't want to have to negotiate. It's 1 1 in the seventh, and we'll be back. Here in Minneapolis, America runs on Duncan.
little guy with the dog is the fan of the year so far. Well, here comes Justin Grimm, and he's pitching for the 20th time in the ERA of 117. 23 strikeouts against eight walks and 15 and a third. Worked the third of an inning the other night in Cleveland. There's a none too pleased John Lester coming out of the ball game, but very good effort from him here this afternoon. Six and a third, three hits, one run. And it was that Suzuki home run in the uh, second inning. The only time the Twins scored against him. Edwin Jackson came into the ball game behind Kyle Hendricks last night, and worked three innings. So that was one of the what we had a we had an acronym or a name for that, that bullpen saved kind of deal we were talking BS. a while back. <laughs> He's got a couple of them. Oh, oh, did he catch it? He didn't, and can't make the play. What a stab there by Castro, but then the ball got away from him, and it was on the short hop. So Suzuki is aboard. Well, that would have been one for the highlight reel. Sharply hit. Short hop snare just couldn't get the handle as he tried to transition to his throwing hand. So Suzuki has two hits. Vargas with a game ending home run against St. Louis two days ago. Bullpen has been good for a good while now. One ball, one strike. in the box and remember Big Poppy was a twin at one point. He may be supersized Poppy. Yeah, he's he's big, bigger he's than David like Ortiz. 290, this guy. He's a big kid. Um, raw power. He hits the ball on the ground a lot. So I think that's something the twins are going to try to address. Try to work with him with his swing. See if he can Lift the ball a little bit more and take advantage of that strength. David Ortiz was released by the Twins December 16, 2002. Not the best move they've ever made. And then signed with the Red Sox. And if you looked at his numbers, they were pretty good with the Twins. Yeah. Um, they didn't like the defense and there's something the, the approach too. But yeah, that was clearly a mistake. To give up on that skill set that early that easily be one thing if you decided he's not a good fit for your club and you trade him for you know, similar value. Grimm's two one. Now it's two and two. I guess you know that's just the nature of it, right? Every general manager's got a deal or two in their yep. their past that they regret. If they could get a do-over on. And he got him for out number two. Did not give in and Vargas overly anxious. Such ugly hacks today. So the 
before the switch hitting Escobar comes up. Chris Bazio will head out to the mound. Most games, many games, won and lost in the seventh inning. Most clubs really good at shutting you down in the last couple of innings, so these are very important at bats. See who we got working uh, tomorrow in the ball game. Jake Arietta will go for the Cubs. Kyle Gibson works for the Twins. Pedro Stroke. Good vibe in the ballpark last night and today. There's so many Cub fans here. I think that's energized the Twins fans too. Yeah, and they had an, an influx of Cardinal fans for those two games earlier this week as well. So it's been kind of a festive week here in Minneapolis. Time called as Grimm just had started toward the plate. Bounce to Rizzo right at the bag to end the inning. That'll take us to the eighth. Cubs one, wins one. In the Twin Cities this weekend for the first time in the three years. And the weather has absolutely cooperated. And right now, a 1 1 tie late. Cubs 12 and 13 all time against the Twins since 1997 when interleague play began. Fiend still working against Chris Bryant. And a strike. Warning track fly out in the first, strike out in the third, a walk, and stranded at third in the sixth. Talking about Chris being on pace to drive in 100 runs. If he were to do that, he would become the first Cub 
rookie to drive in 100. The record belongs to Charlie Irwin, who drove in 95 in 1894. If you want to get a little more modern, Giovanni Soto and Billy Williams each drove in 86. And I believe both won rookie of the year. As a result. Soto 2008, Billy Williams in 1961. Two and two on Bryant. Fly to center. Buxton takes a look back and he's going to have room. Oh, he just missed that one. First left his bat. That was reminded of the one he hit in Cleveland the other day off of uh, David Murphy, the outfielder who came in to pitch in the blowout game. He had a 450 some odd foot home run to straightaway center field. This time ball just got a little deep on him. Coglin, one for three with a stolen base. Backdoor breaker. Caught enough of the plate for strike one. Foul. Third base up by Jim Reynolds. Change up down and away. Yeah. The head of the bat may have traveled a little too far. Castro the hitter. First pitch swinging and he pops it up. Vargas in foul territory and the inning over quickly. Cubs go one, two, three again.
It's going to come down to the bullpens today. Casey Feen, six up, six down for Minnesota. Justin Grimm got the final two outs of the seventh for the Cubs, and now it's Pedro Strope here in the eighth. Strope for the 34th time. Buxton, the nine hole hitter, and then the top. Righties will see fastballs and sliders. Let these fastball sliders and occasional splitter. He'll cut his fastball. Two misses, two and oh. Buxton listed at 62190. Second overall pick in the 2012 draft out of Appling County High School in Baxley, Georgia. That bounced up there, never gave him a chance to think about swinging. Three and one. Two years ago, Buxton stole 55. Injury plague last year, 31 games. You never want to walk the leadoff man late, especially against the guy who can run. And this will come down to a matter of trust for Paul Molitor as to whether he wants to try to run with Buxton here. Obviously, has. Outstanding speed, one of the fastest guys in all of baseball, but Malter have enough confidence that he'd get a good jump, be aggressive here in this situation. Young players are sometimes tentative. I don't think he wants to bunt with Brian Dozier. He's one of his best power threats. Gene Glenn down at third, former Cubs third base coach. Which Davis is the first base coach. The one sent in the air. Right center, and it's Dexter Fowler getting behind it. Buxton tags. Throw to second. He's going to be out at second. Dexter Fowler nails Byron Buxton. I just want a great baseball play by Fowler. It's a heads up play by Buxton to tag in that deep fly ball, trying to get to second base. And Fowler with the catch, and then the good, strong, accurate throw into second base. Challenge by Castro's foot. The right foot kept Buxton off the bag. Great positioning there by Starlin Castro. And it was intentional or not, it kept him off the base. Good teamwork. Huge play. Yeah, if his foot's not there, JD, I think Buxton's in. Yeah, they challenge, and that's an enormous play. I think he was just making an adjustment to the throw, but well done. Swing and a miss on a slider by Rosario. Watch the right foot. His hand lands right on top of the shoe. Quick pitch. Foul. I think it was a good baseball play. I think it was a good send. Oh, yeah. No problem yeah. with Buxton yeah. going and just a. Yep. Heads up play yep. by the Cubs That's defense. It's the kind of ball where it's that high, you know it's going to get caught in the outfield. Right, 
You know, if you feel like there's a chance it's going to get over the outfielder's head and get to the wall, you you don't tag. But he recognized that Fowler was going to be able to catch that ball, and it just became a race between Buxton's legs and Fowler's arm, and Fowler won the race. Rolled into right. Bring up Joe Mauer, the DH. Ball one. Forty thousand sixty six a sellout here at Target Field. No hits for Mauer today, but a couple of walks. Rosario down there at first base with his second base hit. He stole second back in the first. A fairly modest lead right now. Hey. Throw to first. Out, David Ross. Just picked off Rosario to end the inning. He won a game in Washington a couple of weeks ago. Let's hang on one second just to make sure Paul Molitor doesn't challenge and he will not. 1-1. One, one. Defense the story in the bottom of the eighth. Yeah, Eight six stuff. double play and then the pickoff to end it. Ross and uh, Rizzo become pretty adept at that play and that was beautifully executed. Now the closer for the Twins, Glenn Perkins, enters the ball game. Perfect 23 out of 23 and save opportunities. Strike one on Kyle Schwarber. Perkins, a two-time All-Star, should be back again this year for the third consecutive year. He is from Minnesota. He went to the University of Minnesota here in Minneapolis. And I'm going to make a totally out off the wall claim. Yeah. But I think the Twins 
have done either a better job or more interesting job doesn't necessarily mean better of having Minnesota guys play for them. Swing and a miss. Schwarber. And struck out three times today, one out of four. Uh, Perkins, Molitor, Winfield, Maurer, Kuzman, Morris, Eisenreich, Bergmeier. It is a long list of guys from the state of Minnesota who've all worn twins uniforms. Just right. thought I'd throw that out there. Herbeck. Herbeck, yep. Well, you know, it. Uh... Steinbach if you uh, it, it kind of makes sense I mean to draft kids from the area you, you might get a little hometown discount Buxton retires to Northfield. I don't know if there's any evidence to support that but if, you know if you're a kid from this area and you establish yourself as a big leaguer here play a few years and you might be willing to leave a little money on the table to stay here in your hometown. Or you might be tired of leaving tickets for your family and friends and say, I need to get out of Dodge. <laughs> Is it the triplet cities? Minneapolis, St. Paul, and, and Dodge. Dodge. Yeah. 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 Dodge doesn't get a whole lot of pub. Cubs last base runner, the uh, Denorfia walk to load the bases in the sixth. Oh! It's kind of like the French speaking guy is becoming Montreal Canadiens. Mm -hmm. right? Out toward the alley. Ross around first, and he's going to have to hold. Well, it would have been safe, but you don't know that. And as Rosario got it back in quickly, so yeah, he's that, two for four. Yeah, that, that would have been a justifiable go for David Ross, but it's not a, an automatic go, uh, just because he doesn't run that well. But when you got an outfielder traveling as far as uh, Rosario had to there, this spin throw, there's a chance it's going to be offline. So that's that's why that becomes a, a reasonable play to try to get to two on that one. And you see, he's a little frustrated. Again, not not an automatic go for sure. Three man bench for Joe Madden today. You got to be careful in a tie ball game how you use your resources. I think if Ross were to get into scoring position, he'd probably run for him, but with two outs and David on first and a left hander on the mound, he figures he'd be better off saving his, his bench. Herrera's bouncing around in there, getting loose just in case. Perkins has only walked four this year in 29 in the third innings. He struck out 26. Comes right after you. He's allowed a couple of long balls. Last season he saved 34. Failed on seven occasions. And now Jonathan Herrera before a 3 2 pitch will be called on to pinch yeah. run for David Ross. He'll be able to move with the pitch. Considering there are two outs. Yeah, double, he'll score easy, more easily than Ross would. David had a good day. Caught a good game. Good pickoff. And went two for four with a double. He got picked off too. And a double play. We should add that. Runner goes. Strike three call. And the inning is over. We will go to the bottom of the ninth. 
Cubs now will try to get this one into extra innings. You be the judge. We have not seen a run since the Cubs tied it on the Anthony Rizzo double in the third inning. Here's Miguel Montero to catch after David Ross was lifted for a pinch runner. Lefty James Russell enters the ball game to face left-handed hitting Joe Maurer. Russell on for the 23rd time. He has pitched to a 2.35 earned run average. Maurer doesn't really blink against left-handed pitching. He's hitting nicely. Better against lefties and righties this year, 281 against Southpaws. Coming into play today. A couple of walks and a punch out so far. He was hitting when Ross and Rizzo conspired on the pickoff in the last inning. Probably one and done here for Russell this afternoon. Jason Mott's up. Yep, I was just going to say this looks to be a two pitcher inning for the Cubs. They're trying to get the ball game into the tenth. Lester, Grimm, Strope, and now Russell. Doesn't chase much. Forces you to throw it over the plate. He's actually been better against lefties than righties. Ball four. Third walk for Maurer back. He's a D8, so he hasn't played any defense, and he has not put a ball in play today. Three walks and a strikeout. Short day for Russell, and he's charged with getting Maurer. It'll be Mott. One on, nobody out, bottom nine. We'll be right back.
Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By Ford, America's best-selling brand. Check out our entire lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. And by your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers. Winning run is aboard with nobody out. Jason Mott on to work. He'll face Trevor Plouffe. Joe Maurer is that runner at first base. He just walked against James Russell. 1-1 one, one tie. Plouffe, uh, one of the heroes for the Twins in the ball game last night. Drove in four. Had a couple of doubles. Hey, he's bounced in a couple of double plays and grounded out. Less likely to do that with Mott on the mound. Well, he's going to get the ground ball. That'd be a good pitch. Good heater down to get started. Mauer runs and Plouffe fouls. The White Sox have beaten the Texas Rangers three to two. That ends their eight game losing streak. And Bryce Harper is homered for the Nationals in support of Max Scherzer who's dealt four perfect innings. Against the Pirates today. We're tied at one here, and the 0-2 to Plouffe is high. Nationals leading Pittsburgh 1-0 on Harper's 23rd. That's his new career high. 23 home runs. In his 66th game. Yeah, he's been uh, awfully impressive. Right hander Blaine Boyer. If we get to extras. To Plouffe with Maurer running. The pitch is high. Here comes the throw by Montero. It's late. Winning run now at second with nobody out. Maurer's second steal of the year. Yeah, a few years back, Maurer run a little bit more frequently. And you know it's in there. He had a modest lead. Almost overslipped the bag. His 48th career steal. Has not been in double digits since he took 13 bags back in 05. We're challenging something here. Assuming the tag at second base. Let say maybe Maurer came off the base. Well, yeah, why leave the challenge on the table? Even if it's a 50 50 proposition, this could be huge. That's the game winning run. Now we're kind of upright. Barely ahead of it, the tag is Ooh. Russell. I did that left knee slash quad come off the base? If the tag stayed on, he's out. Yeah, there's a, there's a, a brief moment there where he's off the base. Yeah, he's going to be out. going to be in. really interesting to see how they call it. The oh, he's tag, out. Yeah, the tag never left the body. This is uh, Castro got run up on a similar play like this earlier this year on a challenge. I think it's kind of a bogus. Bogus deal, but it's the rule, and it's a good call by Joe Madden to challenge that one. They cannot justify not calling him out in this situation. He was clearly off the base while the tag was still on him. Yeah, he's out. So it's pretty clear cut. In fact, should not take very long, and the call now coming from New York. He's out.
Enormous. Great job by Russell holding the tag, staying with the play the whole way. And there's the break right there. The contact is broken. Mauer is out. Well, Massimoto need home. Henry Blanco relaying that information to Dave Martinez, who gave a thumbs up to Joe Madden, challenged it, and they were right. Last year was a comeback year for Monet post surgery. It's a little bit at double A and triple A for the Cardinals, 29 times for the big league club. Velocity appears to be all the way back now this season. So that caught stealing will go two to four. High fly ball. Left center field and it's foul to make the catch. It seems to me the fans here in Minneapolis aren't good judges of fly balls. Everything in the air today, they think it's by well, yeah, I think that again, because there's so many Cup fans here, it's fun to watch the emotions as that ball rolls <laughs> through the air. The Twin fans were a little exuberant, and then as it settled into Fowler's glove, you heard the Cup fans rise up. If you listen to Garrison Keeler, uh, Minnesotans are generally not optimistic people. <laughs> Strike one. That was a 10 pitch at bat, by the way. Interrupted by the replay. And that was a good interruption. That ball should get down. It will in front of Coglin. So Hunter is on with two outs. And especially with the Cubs in no doubles deployment out there in the outfield, very deep was Coughlin, so no chance to make a play on that ball. Pinch runner coming for Hunter. Shane Robinson. Left now, a little back pedal, and that'll send us to extras. Top of the order for the Cubs. Fowler followed by Anthony Rizzo as the only Cub RBI today.
Twins are six and three in extras. The Twins are three and one. Robinson pinch ran. Uh, for Hunter, he's going to play left. That'll move Rosario from left to right. And veteran right hander Blaine Boyer, 33 years old, soon to turn 34, takes over on the mound. And with a number of big league clubs, broke in with the Braves. First pitch swinging, Fowler, knocked down by Dozier, and he can't get the ball cleanly. Go ahead, run is on. That's a single. Sure, Dozier had to leave his feet for this one. He opted to, couldn't feel the ball cleanly, still had time. There's all kinds of options there. Don't go down, stay up. Let Escobar play it. What? I thought they gave him a hit. Yeah, I think they did give him a hit. Yep, so it was two out of five. Here's Rizzo. And regardless of the scoring, it's a play that should have been made in a break and an opportunity for the Cubs. Boyer in his 297th Major League appearance, all out of the bullpen. He debuted with Atlanta in 05. He's pitched for St. Louis, Arizona, the Mets. Ground ball, base hit in the center. Fowler will make the turn on his way to third. It's a team effort, but this weekend it's been a lot of Anthony Rizzo, hasn't it? Yeah, well, it's fitting because it's been the story of the year. He has been the, the lead dog for sure on this club. One of the best in the business. This is a two-seam fastball, maybe off the outside corner, but still very easy for Rizzo to reach because he's so close to home plate. Boyer actually was going to retire. After 2011, he got back to the big leagues last year with San Diego. This is his 32nd appearance this year with the Twins. Pitched in Japan. And the infield now in against Chris Bryant. Those are being held. Not deep. Buxton coming in. Fowler ready to tag. Here he comes toward the plate. He's going to stop. Rizzo will make second, however. As Buxton actually overthrew everybody. So they're at second and third with one out. Which might set up an intentional walk here. In fact, I would bet on it. Coglin do up and then Castro. If that catch in center field is for the second out of the inning. I think they send Fowler there. Catch being the first out. Makes sense to be a little conservative. Well, Starlin Castro had back to back game ending RBI hits last weekend against the Cincinnati Reds. And he will be given the opportunity to give his team an extra inning lead today. Third through the sixth inning, the Cubs left seven men on base, including the bases loaded in the sixth. Twins have their infielders playing about halfway. And they're going to have an option depending on the pace of the ground ball to either come home or try to turn two pace and direction. Fowler, Rizzo, Coglin, third to first in terms of the base runners. The batter, Castro, the pitcher, Boyer. And here we go. Base hit. Cubs will get a couple. Fowler scores. Rizzo is in. It's three to one. Wasting no time. 
time. Castro picks on that first fastball. Trying to get in, looking for a ground ball, but he gets the hands pulled in, lifts it, and delivers two. Nice bit of hitting. Now Castro blocking the base remember on that overturn on the steal by Mauer that was a huge play in this game. And then the two run go ahead single here in the 10th. Day for Schwarber so far. He has a hit, just a little squibber infield hit. But he's punched out three times and chasing that high fastball. And it got part of the bat, so that's a foul tip. It's one and one. Cubs would love to get some more here. So Mott now can get a win. Hector Rondon looks to be the guy to get the final three outs. Right now it would be a safe situation. Lofted to left, where Robinson makes the catch. Here comes Krista Norfia, 0 for 3 with a walk. Cubs out hitting the Twins 11 to 6. They finally just got their first lead of the day. Now the frustration factor, if you will, had to be running awfully high in that visiting dugout with all the chances they let get away through the middle innings. That all goes away with a W. Vargas Escobar Buxton 7 8 9 due for Minnesota in the bottom of this 10th inning. That ball will drop down Dozier will field but Coughlin's going to score Castro to third it's four to one. 
How about that placement by Chris DeNorthia? Yeah, like a shanked lob wedge. And it works out just fine for DeNorthia. Breaking ball down in the zone. He pulls off of it. And he just flips it out there beyond the reach of Dozier. Ball actually appeared to check up a little bit, much like a golf shot. It'll be Aaron Thompson, a left hander for Boyer. When we return, Cubs lead four to one. Former first round pick of the Florida Marlins in 2005. Out of Houston, Texas. 28 years old. Debuted in the big leagues with Pittsburgh in 2011. Seven appearances last year with the Twins. This will be number 33 this year. Big three run tenth on four hits. Two runs single, Starlin Castro. Two batters later, Denorfia adding some insurance with a base hit. Miguel Montero with his first plate appearance today. First and third, three runs in and a strike called. Slicing fly ball out in the deep left center on the run. It's Buxton, and that will end the inning with the Cubs strike big time. It's 4 1.
play of the game. Startled Castro up night last night. But he delivers big time here. Two on single to get the Cubs the lead in the top of his tenth. Fowler started it when the base hit on a play that probably should have been made. Solid single by Rizzo. They walk Cogman to get to Castro. He spoils that strategy, and now it's on to Hector Rondon to close it out. Been a while for Hector. He has not pitched on the road trip. Went three times in the Cincinnati series at home. If you were to rank and Russell. Gets Vargas with difficulty in terms of save opportunities. This would be yeah. in a situation every closer mm -hmm. would love to come into. Uh, you're up three. You start an inning and you're facing seven, eight, nine. Yep. Yep, absolutely. And you know, given the fact that you know Hector has been a little shaky here of late. Perfect situation for him to nail one down. It's one you know some two seamers trying to sink the ball a little bit. He's actually broken out a changeup of late. Or throwing a slider a little bit more. I believe that was the change up there. Hard for a pitcher who throws as hard as Hector does. To come off that fastball, but it will serve him well. Diving attempt, Castro can't reach it. Escobar is aboard. Here comes Buxton, and the tying run is now on deck. Great effort. This couldn't get there in time. Max Scherzer perfect through six today in Washington. And remember, his last start, he struck out 16. And a one hitter. Struck out seven so far today. One and one to Buxton. Popped him up. Russell battling the sun here in the late afternoon hours, but he's got it. By the way, after Paul of nothing, the big hayfield where uh, Andy Dufresne left the, the box. Uh -huh. That was in Buxton. That was the name of the town. Uh -huh. yeah. I thought I'd mention that. Yeah. It's good to know. Cup fans being heard as Escobar will take second and will not get a stolen base out of it. His run means nothing. John Lester's last start, we got a no decision. And the Cubs would win it the next innings on a Starlin Castro hit. And we'll do the same here today. And his contribution today was huge as the Cubs 
Had plenty of opportunities but couldn't push through and he held the line allowed just the one home run the solo home run to Suzuki. A one two. Caught by Castro. Cubs win. Cubs win. Starlin Castro with a game and the game winning hit. And a nice running grab on the liner to finish him off four to one the final and ten. And nice uh, performance by Castro here today. Bouncing back after that tough day yesterday. Good performance all the way around. Uh, Lester outstanding. The bullpen solid. A rubber game tomorrow. Yep, we'll be back with you tomorrow right here on WLS Channel 7. Cubs and Twins at 1 o'clock Central Time. Final score in 10 today. Cubs 4. Twins 1. Now for JD and our entire crew here in Minnesota, I'm Len Casper. Thank you for watching Chicago Cubs Baseball.